what an awesome night. What an awesome night. Just uh, congratulations to all the other inductees. Um, fabulous just seeing so many of you guys out there. First, James, congratulations. Uh, there's not a day goes by I don't think about your practice. And I really, everybody I say on defense, when I watch the scout team, I always think about James Hedebo. Because when I want those young guys we got running around, if they're a pain in the rear, then I know they got a shot. And nobody got more out of their ability than you did. And I remember that day at Amherst High, and Waxy, Waxy really spoke the world of you. And uh, when you walked onto our place, uh, and every time I saw you, when we played against each other in the National Football League, I, this guy's a lot better than what he looks. And just tremendous career. Just uh, love you to death, man. It's great. Um, how did we get here? God, I look over at Todd Bankhead. I see you, man. It's awesome. Jimmy Moore. Haven't seen him in a long time. Jimmy Moore. I got here, wasn't sure, still the greatest receiver in one, one season in UMass history. We've had some pretty good ones here. Um, we, went, we went through spring We went through spring practice, and I thought we, we needed somebody that could, could, could run, so we went to the junior colleges and couldn't find anybody, and then I finally got a high school coach in Austin, Texas. We had this other kid, I don't know, he was at Coffeyville, and I was driving to Plymouth to play golf. Every Sunday I drove down, every Sunday I called Jimmy, and uh, he said, hey, this kid you're talking about, we got this guy, Jimmy Moore, that's from SMU. I talked to one of the coaches there, and they said, this kid's a real deal. And I can't remember how I got you coming. I called you every Sunday, uh, before golf and after golf, and you got here. And I knew we had you like the fourth game you came into my office down in Boyd and said, Coach, I really like playing for you. And you brought so much confidence to those guys. You taught Adrian Zulo how to be the next great player and everything else. And just appreciate you, man. Love seeing you. Other guy, Todd Bankhead. Story, how did he get here? Well, luckily, Hofstra took Gio Carmazzi because he had visited Hofstra, I believe, and I heard about him. Um, it was the last day. Uh, forget his high school. His junior college coach who coached San Diego State, Palomar Junior College, I called. It was 6.05 in the morning there, and luckily the head coach was in his office because it was California time, 9.05 our time. So yeah, yeah, this kid's a pretty good player, and you know I probably should have played him more. He really was better than the other guy. He didn't really start any games. And uh, you were in Texas. It was the last day you were going to register for classes. And uh, I said to you, well, what do you think? I got, you can be our guy, and I, I'm going to throw it around if you come. And then he asked me one question. Is it, uh, uh, he says, Coach, I'm, I'm religious. Is that going to be a problem? And I said, as long as you can handle the F word, you'll be fine. <laughs> and he handled it better. I was harder on Todd Bankhead than any player I've ever been around. And these guys respected him so much because... And in my office, they tell him, don't worry, I didn't mean anything, because if you can take it from me, you got the toughness and everything else and the ability to do great things, and the guys believed in him, and, and we were off and running. I look at that tape, and I, I, I so vividly remember um, being there at, at, uh, in Chattanooga. Um, and Georgia Southern had a really good football team. Honestly, they were better than us, talent-wise. They were really, really good. They were 14-0. and 0. They were rolling. It was a little bit rainy. All right, so this is all right. Okay, I watched Adrian Peters warm up. I watched the receivers. I watched some of their D-linemen. I said, oh, dude, boy. And what really changed it was this university. Because the minute our band came around the corner, while we were warming up, and I watched all those guys at Georgia Southern look over and say, we ain't playing no junior college. And the pride walked, marched through us, and I saw our guys giddy up, and then Marcel took the first one down, and then Cole a made the play. We hit the guys and uh, just played an unbelievable game. I've never been around a team. I apologize. I don't, my uh, national championship rings in Arizona, so I wore the Super Bowl ring, but only because this is the greatest team I've ever been around. That includes the 2005 Pittsburgh Steelers. <clears throat> <clears throat> no group of young men ever improved anywhere near as much as this group. That first day of spring practice, there weren't four-hour rules. We were five hours and 35 minutes, and boy, out on the practice field. And nobody complained. 
And I saw a lot of parents out here, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys. Never once did I get a call on anything else. You were completely supportive all, at all times, and uh, just tremendous. And you guys were great leaders for these young men. And, but I couldn't be more proud of being a head coach of the national championship team. Great, great kids. They did it. Beat everybody. Beat them all. And uh, it was really, when I saw you guys 10 years ago, when I was working with the Eagles, I said it was really important to me to make sure that this team got in the Hall of Fame because it's the greatest team I've ever been around. Congratulations. Wow, okay. <laughs> so, um... Well, first, let me see my guys stand up. Let me see my guys. <laughs> Obviously, it was an honor for Kerry and I to be your captains uh, for that last year. Uh, you know, we, uh, we face a lot of adversity, um, you know, it's, it's a challenge for us, but, uh, you know, bef before we kind of get into, you know, and we saw a lot of it here, but I just want to just take a quick pause because I think it's important when you think of what UMass is and what UMass family is. I mean, we are a family and, and this is obviously you can see it tonight by how many guys have come back and, and their families and, uh, you know, it's crazy because it seems like it was yesterday when we were all together. And it's funny because we're still telling the same jokes. We're still saying the same things. We got Saturday night sprites are right outside on the way out. <laughs> Only a few of you, yeah, a few of you will know that. Okay. Um, but, uh, no, but it's great. It's just great to see everybody back. Uh, a couple things I do want to say, you know, I came in a little earlier than Kerry did. Um, and... Uh, we had a lot of guys that are coming through the program, a lot of coaches, a lot of doctors, um, a lot of people that aren't here tonight, uh, a lot of people that have passed on, um, whether it be our brothers or, or our coaches or, you know, the, the doctors that took care of us. So I think it's important to recognize them and, and hope that they're looking down upon us right now um, and just give them the respect to know that uh, we wish they were here with us, um, but we're happy that they were a part of our family as well. So I just want to give respect to them. For most of us, it kind of started, you know, before our last season. Uh, it started with a staff that, uh, uh, for a large percentage of us, just, just said to themselves, you know, what, we're going to take a chance on you, and we're going to see what you can do. Um, and, they, and they believed in us. And it really started with Coach Mike Hodges. So I think we need to respect him and give him the respect because without him, we wouldn't be here. So thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. So, yeah, even Coach, uh, you know, we even alluded to it, you know, when, when Coach Whip came in, he said we're going to the national championship. Uh, we were like, okay. Does this guy know? After that first practice, I agreed with you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he doesn't know what he inherited. Um, but, uh, but it was good to have that, you know, it was good to have that enthusiasm. It was good to have someone that believed in us. Uh, we did get lucky through the year. Uh, we, we lost our first game, you know, at Delaware. Um, but, uh, but we, <laughs> but we kept moving, you know, but listen, you know, we all had our thing. We all had our thing, you know, uh, we lost to Connecticut twice and we were one of the last teams, I think, to get into the playoffs. Uh, yeah, so um, we definitely had Lady Luck on our side. But the funny part about it, though, is once we got into the playoffs, it's almost like that's when the fun started because no one anywhere had belief. So every game we played, it was almost like we were just shocking the world. And it was our – every single game, we just got more and more clout. And we were just on a cloud. I mean, as a team, as a family, it was just – it was such a fun time. 
it was such a fun time. And uh, I, I got to tell you, it's, you know, I know I've met with a bunch of you guys tonight. Hopefully I reached out to everyone. I haven't had a feeling like this in a long time, to, especially when I saw that email list of who was coming back to see everyone. I mean, this is what it's about. You know, us as a family, um, being able to, to remain as we've been and, and to stay together, this is what it's about. And continuing this, this tradition of UMass and UMass football. Like, this is what it's about. And this is what's important to understand that we, we've, we are part of that foundation that has to continue to push forward and show that next class and that next recruit what this foundation and what this program is. Because we started it. Because we were a part of it because we took those that came before us and we said, yes, I wanna be like that guy. Yes, oh my God, who's that? How can I take his job? Like, we continue the tradition and we have that responsibility to take that and keep moving forward because that's what this is. That's what this is about, the tradition of UMass, the tradition of UMass football. And with, with Ryan, what he's done, and with what Chancellor has done, and they've be, they have taken uh, a definite leap in believing in this institution and believing in this program, we're growing. And we're getting to that position that, honestly, I mean, we can all say it, we wish we were at when we first came in, to have that locker room, to have that potential, you know, field out there, to have a bubble, to have, you know, turf, like turf, turf, really? No, <laughs> you're in a glad chucks with mud, Figure it out. I'm like, all right. Can I get a pair of slacks? No. Can I get a pair of sweats? Fresh out. All right. Um, okay. So we're here. I mean, we all know. We're here. So um, I can never honestly be more proud to, to be a part of anything in my life. Uh, it's, uh, I just love you all. I love you all. And uh, it was such an honor for us to be chosen as captains of you, um, but it's more of an honor for us to be brothers and for us to be family. And uh, we will forever continue to carry this torch together as one. So go UMass football. All right. Uh, you know, you didn't have to bring up. Uh, I didn't. The first game, you didn't have to, you didn't have to do that. But um, this is a, a great night to see everybody here. Um, don't get to see everybody like we used to back in the day, um, but it's good to see a lot of faces and get caught up a little bit. Uh, Coach Whipple alluded to the four-hour rule, uh, and everybody here knows about the perfect practice. So for you guys that don't know about the perfect practice, uh, it went a little something like this. Usually we'd get in the locker room, we'd come out, we'd get on the field, we stretch, and we start practice. Well, this particular day, I don't know what Coach Whip and the coaches talked about before practice, but uh, we walked out like we always do. Someone took maybe one step too short, Coach Whip, go back in the locker room and come back out. So we went back in, came back out, took us about... 20 minutes to do it right to make him happy. Then we got on the field and uh, Andy decided to have his worst kicking day ever for kickoff. <laughs> Could not get it 15 yards down the field. Andy right there? You mean yeah, Andy that, right there? The, the ball guy okay. back, yeah, hiding, yeah, All right. yeah. All right. uh, <laughs> it would go 15 yards and we didn't just run the play over. We had to go back in the locker room hopefully get everything right leading up to that point and get past that point. And that was the theme of the practice. Diadi, our center, we got in the huddle. Coach Whip said to Diadi, Diadi, how far is the ball supposed to be? How, how far is the huddle supposed to be from the line of scrimmage? He said, uh, eight yards. Diadi, you're at seven and a half. Run. It got to a point where I think he, Coach Whip was, oh, the sky is blue. Run. We were out there for about five, six hours, busting our tail, just working. And that was one of the major stories we always talk about. But that day had to happen for us to achieve what we achieved. Um, 
You know, the, I alluded to in the video that this was definitely a team. And a lot of uh, different teams out there say they're a team. But in order to be a team, a lot of things have to happen. You have to have people with the same mindset across the board. Um, if you have one person that doesn't think the same way, you're not going to succeed. And this whole team had the same mindset. We all were jokesters. We all liked to have a good time. But we also all worked hard on and off the field, but also had fun and celebrated. Um, and talking about working hard, uh, there's one guy here that I don't see. Um, it's Coach O. Uh, Coach Otrondo um, played a big role and a big part in our success and our achievements. He was our strength coach. And um, he was a guy who made a big difference for us on the field. Um, I'd just like to give him a round of applause, if you guys don't mind. <laughs> Coach O was like a second father for a lot of us. He really um, made sure we were doing what we had to do in the weight room, made sure we were taking care of ourselves off the field. Um, had his, uh, what was it, Co Coach O bars? Coach O bars? Uh, his little energy bars he created for us. But um, you know, I am proud and very happy to be here with all my guys to celebrate this moment that we achieved together. Um, go down memory lane, thinking about the Outback. That was a, an amazing time. I don't think the Outback ever seen a bill that high before. Um, I ate stuff from the Outback that I <laughs> just wanted to try. So. Uh, <laughs> We had an amazing time. The flight back was great. Um, for some reason, they decided to be uh, news anchors and video cameras there for us when we landed. Marcel had to get interviewed. Let's just say we all celebrated on our way back. So you can imagine how Marcel felt when he had to get off the bus and go in front of a camera. Um, but, uh, you know, thank you guys all for you know, working your tails off to achieve what we achieved. It's a memory that I still talk about when I was coaching. It's a memory that, you know, I know all of us hold very, very high. Um, and, uh, you know, thank you guys. I love you guys. And go UMass. <laughs>